Welcome to Monday Matinee on the Mutual Audio Network, hosted by Pete Lutz. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Episode 2 of Dark Paradise will be released on October 10th. For a special Halloween treat, I invite you all to listen to episode one of Cursed Dwellings. Cursed Dwellings, a Dark Paradise saga, is a labor of love. A fan audio drama serial created by Rachel Pulliam set in an alternative universe where dark shadows and strange paradise meet. No monetary profit has been made from the creation of this saga. My name is Betty Hanscom, and tonight I return to the town I once called my home, Collinsport. There I will be embraced by family and surrounded by friends. Oh, there I will be safe from the past, free from the mistakes I made years ago, and ready to bury myself in a place where I hope not to be found, among the inhabitants of Collinwood. Haven't you buried yourself inside that bottle long enough? <laughs> I can only think of a couple of occasions when society gives permission for a man to drown himself with liquor. A wedding or a funeral. And, considering how Mr. Stoddard is unlikely to propose to you any time soon, at least if he knows what's good for him... What does Paul have to do with any of this? And I don't know why you and everyone else is talking funerals when there won't be one. Be sensible, Elizabeth. We both heard Dr. Reeves' diagnosis. It's time to face reality. Our father is not long for this world. Uh, yes, Bennett. Is he still with us? He's asking for you. Liz, try to relax, and I'll be back down when I know... No, sir. He's asking to see Miss Elizabeth. Thank you, Bennett. Thank you, Bennett. Of course he would choose you over me. Roger, why can't you be more responsible like your older sister? Oh, my Elizabeth will go off to do great things. She will become head of the household one day. Well, I'm afraid that day is approaching fast. I just wonder if you're really up for the task. What do you mean by that? That should be obvious. You don't want him to die because you don't want to be shackled to this house any more than I do. That isn't true, and you know it. <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. Go on, Liz. Go ahead and see what the old man wants. I'll never understand how you can be so callous. Maybe you should ask him. understand why you have to go away at all. There are plenty of opportunities right here in Collinsport. Oh, yes, I know that, Dad. But haven't you always said I needed to pave my own way? To create my own path? Don't twist my words, Betty. I'm not. Oh, look, you always said you wanted the best for me. Now, is the best really waiting tables all day at the Collinsport Inn? It's a respectable living. And I'm not disputing that. But it's not what I want to do. All right. What is it, then? How do you expect to go off and find yourself without a steady income? I saved a little, and, and when it's gone, I'll manage. I'll figure it out, Dad. I wouldn't be much of a father if I didn't worry about you. Miss? Did you hear what I said? Oh. I'm sorry. No, I didn't. I was asking if you were troubled. You seemed a million miles away. I suppose I was. Next stop, Collinsport. Next stop, Collinsport. Port. 
You folks needing a place to stay? We've got several vacancies here at the inn. You also might want to help yourself to our famous lobster rolls. They're not to be missed. And if that doesn't grab you, head down a few blocks to the Blue Whale. It's one of the most happening spots in town. We've got popular tunes in the juke, and the first class is on the house if you're new in town. Okay. You said we were going to Salubrious Falls! No, I said you may think it was like Salubrious Falls. Now, no more arguments. Why, if it isn't my old friend and co-worker... Oh, it's good to see you again, Victor. Is your father picking you up? Uh, no. He doesn't know I'm here yet. <laughs> well, you know I can keep a secret. How may I help you, sir? I'd like to check into my room, please. It should be under the name McGuire. Elizabeth, is that you? I'm here, Father. Uh, are you alone? He isn't with you. Roger, I left him downstairs. Good. <laughs> what I have to say is for you alone. What is it? <laughs> Long ago... On my grandmother's deathbed, my father was meant to hear a secret. A secret our family has kept for generations. Father, you're not going to die. Don't interrupt. But my grandmother, Edith, died before she could reveal to my father what the secret was. And your grandfather died before learning what, what he was meant to do to prevent a great evil from sweeping over our town. You aren't making any sense. What do you want me to know? I can't prevent that eventuality. But I ask you to heed my advice. Don't marry Paul Stoddard. What? I've seen into his heart, and I know it is not of goodness. <laughs> he will destroy you, and perhaps even this whole family. You should have married Armand Desmond when you had the chance, before he changed his mind and married another. Paul hasn't even asked me to marry him yet, but if he does, it'll be my decision. And whether that's right or wrong, I... You will live. To regret it, Elizabeth. Mark my words. You will be your ruin and the cause of much unhappiness. Father? Father, I... Oh, no! Roger! Roger! How about under Paul Stoddard? <laughs> Best to try Collinwood if you want to speak with him. He's been living it up with his girl on the hill. Believe me, I will. <laughs> I'd hate to be Paul Stoddard right now. I had no idea Elizabeth was going with anyone. Oh? Your father hasn't supplied you with the latest town gossip? <laughs> well, I... I didn't exactly make myself available. I'm curious why you came back. You were so adamant back then about leaving. Called this place stifling, if recollection serves me. Did you run out of money? No, no, I... I... I felt it was time to make amends. Aye. With Mr. Jameson Collins on death's door, that's bound to make anyone feel guilty about their own family life. It really puts things into perspective, doesn't it? Jameson Collins is... I'm afraid so. 
Dr. Reeves was in earlier and gave me the news. We'll have to catch up later. Hey, you don't want a room? No. I'll be staying at Collinwood. Roger! Roger! Elizabeth, what is it? Had I known he was so close to slipping away, I would have given him a better send-off earlier. Oh, Mr. Jameson, it was such an honor to serve you. No need to stand on ceremony, Bennett. Please go downstairs and phone Dr. Reeves. Inform him of what happened. I imagine he'll want to come here straight away and confirm what we already know. On second thought, go and answer the door and send him up. Yes, sir. Tell me, dear sister, what did our father share with you alone that he couldn't share with me? Not now, Roger. You insist on keeping me in suspense. It didn't concern you. And while I'm now head of this household, it never (laughs) will. Oh, that's what he wanted to discuss. How practical of him. Leave it to Jameson Collins to look over his will with his favorite child. I suppose he left me nothing. How can you? Our father barely lies cold in his bed and you want to talk inheritance? Of course not. I suppose we should go over his funeral arrangements. But I'll leave that to you, Liz. Since you are head of the family now... Betty? Dad? Dad, I've come home! First Dwellings, a dark paradise saga was created by Rachel Pulliam for Soul Twin Audios and is a work of fan fiction. No monetary profit has been made from the creation of this saga. The cast in order of appearance were Rhiannon McAfee as Betty Hanscom, Nathan Waltering as Roger Collins, Meredith Jones as Elizabeth Collins, Peter Wyshynski as Bennett Hanscom, Jake McCaskill as Victor Wells, Adam Blanford as Jason McGuire, and Justin Fife as Jameson Collins. The music was composed and performed by Ross Bernhardt with sound effects from freesound.org. I'm Bruce Busby, and I invite you to join us again next month. Cursed Dwellings, a dark paradise saga, is copyrighted by Rachel Pulliam in 2022. Children of the night, I'm trying to read. Renfield, enter. Count Dracula. I found an especially juicy dinner for you, Master. It's not a puppy this time, is it? No, Master. I promised I had learned my lesson. <laughs> I know you did, and you've been steadfast ever since. I apologize for doubting you. Please, put it over there. Master, if I may ask, why didn't you go out hunting tonight? Why did you request takeout? It's because I'm reading a very excellent book that I just can't put down. It is quite the page-turner, as I believe the children today say. It's called Gothic Meditations at Midnight by Dr. Stephen Edred Flowers. Gothic Meditations at Midnight? Is it a forbidden grimoire of unholy rites? (laughs) 
No Renfield. As its subtitle states, it contains esoteric commentaries on classic horror literature and film from the year 1919, which for me was a very good year, to 1975. I don't understand, Master. Dr. Flowers is a scholar who is also a lover of horror films and literature. And he was a monster kid. You always said children were the most tasty. <laughs> Focus, Renfield. I am not drinking Dr. Flowers. I would rather consume his tasty books, like this one. Gothic Meditations at Midnight. Yes, Renfield. Gothic Meditations at Midnight. In it, he provides commentaries on his thoughts and, well, meditations. Meditations on film and literature through the lenses of the historical Gothic, from the Gothic tribes to the later artistic movement of that same name. He meditates on various esoteric and occult aspects, and with plenty of sinister fun. He even starts with an essay on me. Excellent, Master. What else did he meditate on? Plenty. There are chapters on the mummy, the wolfman, the phantom of the opera, Dr. Frankenstein and his creature, the nihilistic cosmic horror of H.P. Lovecraft, the psychologically interior horror of Edgar Allan Poe, a unique exploration of zombies, the horror films of German Expressionism, and quite a bit more. Each essay explores information and interpretations that are deep and dark, wondrous and mysterious, with a distinct synthesis of the scholarly and the personal. It sounds wonderful, Master. I will leave you to your book and your meal. <laughs> Thank you, Renfield. Out of curiosity, who did you capture for my dinner? An especially pompous professional film and literature critic. <laughs> Most serendipitous, Renfield. Most serendipitous indeed. Critics. And people think vampires are parasites. Ha! Gothic Meditations at Midnight by Dr. Stephen Edred Flowers is available at SeekTheMysteries.com That's S-E-E-K-T-H-E-M-Y-S-T-E-R-I-E-S dot com or at your favorite online or brick-and-mortar bookstore. <laughs>